I'm not seeing the screen, so if somebody could give me a cue up. I've got it playing on my side. Is it is playing? playing. Give me a cue, Evan. I don't see it either. Time to go? Yeah, go, Ed. On my numbers of three. three, three, three okay. He's trying to get a yes. minus two or better. Right. Okay. Because I have to tie because the one, I have to compare my three to one. So a okay. minus two gets me there. A minus three. And so I think you have a less than a coin flip to succeed. There is a lot of ne negative fours in there. Uh, That's all I'm saying. Negative four. Let's go it. All right. All right. I've chosen. And? Ready? I'll do the drop. Come on. What is it? What? It's a symbol. Ooh. I don't even know what that is. You don't want that. I'll put it back then. <laughs> All right, it counts as a minus one. Yeah! Game Explorers. Hey. We are so happy to be here at Dragon Con. I am in my official Dragon Con uniform, <laughs> which I wore last year. Uh, we are, we are going to do it right from here. We'll wear our, I'm going to wear my pith helmet for a minute because that's what we always wear on the floor. We are delighted to be back here. Now, this year we're excited because we were asked to join the Dragon Con DC digital media track. And uh, Ed had Ed was on a couple panels last year, right, Ed? Yep. Yeah. So we're really happy to be here uh, again. And we thought just for fun to do a version of our show live. This is our very first live review show. And what you're going to learn with us today is about three games, because we know that finding games for you and your friends to play can be a daunting task with thousands of board games produced every year from different genres and themes and eras. We bring you three. We hunt them down and we tell you whether you need to dig them up or keep them buried. I am here with my decades long gaming buddies, Evan Bernstein. Hi everyone. Ed Povolitis. Hello. And Mike Grenier. That's me. Hello. I'm your host, Celeste <laughs> Angelus. Let's get started. First up this week, we face our fears as we plunge our hand into the unspeakable <laughs> bag of the unknown in Arkham Horror card game. Next up, it is full steam ahead as we roll right over our rivals in Brass Birmingham. And lastly, we privateer or pirate makes no never mind to us as we <laughs> press our luck at Port Royale. <laughs> Before we get going, I wanted to tell you guys, we are overjoyed to see how much our audience has grown this year. And we have got lots of ways for you to join us in the fun. Yep, we've been uh, tearing into tons of brand new games and uh, getting a look inside with our hyper unboxings on Instagram. And please keep the comments coming because we love talking to you guys. And don't forget, go to Board Game Geek. That's your hub for all things gaming to check out our playthroughs right onto the game pages. Want to see us play a game for the very first time live? <laughs> Turn into our Twitch channel every Thursday night. And in case you miss it, you can also go to our YouTube channel just to check on the subscribe button and you'll get the notification when they go up. I wonder if we should call those first time fumble throughs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they so. feel like. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And, uh, and you can do all that and catch us every single week on any podcatcher feed anywhere. We are all over the place. Stitcher, anywhere else, your iTunes, what do they call it now? iPod. Podcast. <laughs> what do the kids call it these days? The eye thingy? <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you want to become a patron of this show for just $3 a month, go to our website and click on Become a Supporter Today. We have exclusive episodes there for you. We are up to around 40 now. And every week we release a... Bonus, bonus points! Bonus! <laughs> a bonus points episode. So join us anywhere you want. We're there. We're everywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> Cannot escape us. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the board game Arkham Horror, the card game. Designed <laughs> by Nate French and Matthew Newman, published by Fantasy Flight Games. Number of players one to four, ages 14 and up, playtime 60 to 120 minutes. 
Okay, Mikey G, tell us what's in the box. Okay. The cover of the box shows some old timey investigators unloading the revolvers in, in a futile <laughs> effort to defeat the horrible tentacled creatures that are trying to consume them. Uh, aside from cosmic horrors beyond description, you'll find. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, you'll find 239 cards, including investigator stats and matching headshots, uh, scenario cards, and player cards, 149 tokens representing resources and track your chaos horror damage and accumulated clues and doom um, you'll also find a campaign guide a learn to play book and a rules reference guide and that's what's in the box all right well before we start the insanity of this review <laughs> evan tell us a little bit about how it's played all right in arkham horror the card game you and your friends are investigators in the quiet yet not so quiet New England town of Arkham in the year 1925. <laughs> <laughs> As investigators, you're cooperating, and each investigator brings certain strengths and abilities to the group. Why the team? Because this is a region filled with cultists performing foul rituals, haunted houses, and strange creatures, among many other Lovecraftian Ooh. themes. You must work together to uncover these bizarre and strange happenings. Perhaps most importantly, each character has a custom deck of cards which will reveal things such as their personal items, events that will unfold, and certain assets at their disposal. Characters can choose three of the following actions. Draw a card from their deck, play an event or an asset card from their hand, activate an ability, investigate their location, fight an enemy, engage with an enemy, <laughs> Or evade an enemy. Yeah. Many <laughs> actions are doing. Yeah, run away. <laughs> yeah, run away. I think there's a lot of that going on. Running away. Yeah. yeah. Well, Definitely. only if you want to win. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> now many survive, actions. Survive, you mean? Survive? Yeah, it's survival. It's all about survival. Yeah. Many actions are going to require skill checks, which will be modified when you pick from a bag filled with mostly negative modifiers, which adds depth and challenge to what seems like an Why otherwise negative? overwhelmingly oh, easy uh, thing to do. I'll no. talk about that. Look, yeah. here's, the, here's the parting shot. Keep your body alive and equally important, keep your mind from going insane. Whoever can maintain their wits and the ones that can survive this world will help beat back the forces of darkness. Yeah. It's not likely though. <laughs> You're probably gonna die. As, as is the way with all games about Cthulhu, mm -hmm. you're likely to lose. Right. Yes. <laughs> yep, Evan, hi. <laughs> which, Even which, when you win, you lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, well, I, a yeah. level that's a level of frustration going that's into true. the game you have to accept you just have to accept that that's going to be part of the game mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly if you buy a game about arkham lovecraft cthulhu expect that the balance is not in your favor the mm. odds are stacked against you it wouldn't be a cthulhu game if it wasn't like that i did get right. frustrated but then i was thinking oh wait a minute i chose to play a game based yeah. on yeah the frustration's know. baked into the pie baked here. in right yeah <laughs> 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 right. It's it, if you think about it that way, you don't feel as bad when you do lose. It's right. one of those it games where you just don't feel that bad. It's like it yeah. was too easy. It's like what? This is an yeah. Arkham game? Yeah, <laughs> this is exactly. That. <laughs> exactly. So we were able to play this game in person, which has been great. We're getting back to playing in person, even though we're still playing uh, Twitch every Thursday night for you guys. Um, we definitely love having you guys with us for that game. Um, we did play this one in person and we got to touch the game. You can see behind nice. me is the card back for the game. Oh, yeah, so I know th too. these guys are going to show you some other pictures from the oh, game, right, but yeah. this one has the card backing, which I love. The whole theme of this game taking place in 1925 is gorgeous. The art, of course, Fantasy Flight Games, gorgeous. I love this Art Deco theme. What did you guys think of the look? It definitely brings me into the, the classic Arkham theories, like back in the 20s and 30s, and you know, your, your guns are like a Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Tommy guns. Yeah. I know it's it's a gorgeous game. Again, Fantasy Flight Games always has incredible art. If you're going to buy any of their games, expect to see top-notch art from a 
what would you call it? Like a corral of artists? Yeah. Like a cavalcade? <laughs> hey. Carnival? A team? I say team. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> team. Oh, you want to be boring. Sure, right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so be boring. How about a panoply? A panoply. Yes. Uh, uh, a panoply of talented artisans. A very, flock, very a murder talented. of artists. <laughs> a a gaggle. Yeah, in this case, it's a, a murder of artists. It has yes. to do something with what they do. A brush of <laughs> artists or something. Oh, that's great. I love it. Right. Perfect. You win. All right. So... <laughs> Maybe the only time we'll win this game. Uh. <laughs> um, so this game has, you know, odds against you, player elimination. What did you guys think of that, Mike? Oh, well, I was going to let Evan answer player <laughs> okay, elimination. Go ahead, Evan. I got eliminated. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you lost your marbles? What's up with that? I did. I lost all my sanity points in one horrible pick out of that oh, awful gosh. bag. Oh, my God. I pulled, I think, the one minus four modifier oh, i already yeah. went into the fight with very into that encounter with very slim chance of maintaining my sanity to begin with and mm -hmm. i happened to pick about the worst shit i could yeah let's yeah. talk about that horrible bag yeah let's oh. talk about that horrible bag i, I so, think oh sorry like what negative one is the best you can do in that bag or <laughs> no, zero no, no, like one positive one i yeah, drew the plus one, one. <laughs> the you one did. plus one out of the out bag. of 30 chits there's about right. 30 chits in that bag yeah, yeah. And there's a couple of zeros and then it goes downhill from there <laughs> i think that's yeah. good though it sets the tone you know you're looking for an oppressive environment you're like oh i need a three on the check and i have a five. Oh, i might not make it <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah oh my gosh all right well okay so gameplay you were eliminated evan how long before mm. the game ended was evan eliminated no, it was, it was the not final battle to wear in. There was yeah. a final scene or act or act. He was like the second to last battle, which means he was out for about a good ten minutes. Yeah, I mean, we I mean, played the shortest. Ten minutes is an eternity to me. <laughs> <laughs> we played the shortest possible scenario we could, though. Like it, it could be a lot longer, and somebody could get eliminated really early in this game. Yeah. So that's kind of a kind of a bummer. Yeah, yeah. We're getting yeah. eliminated really early. That's kind of tough. But I mean, and here you were at the final act. You know, the last. 10, 15 minutes of a two hour game. Yeah. No. So. I suppose uh, it's not terrible if you're the guy who's picking up the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or or really do you bad. let the guy die because you want them to be the one to pick up the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. That's I, th cold yeah. I think one, if I recall, one of the reasons why I perished is I was not in the right position at the right time, and I think we mm. lost either right. a turn or or a round in which in which we could have cooperatively yeah. used our items, used our um, yeah. our, our cards to help in, enhance my chances to, to win that. But I was mm -hmm. I, I had gotten separated from the group. I think I went up and explored the attic, and things were happening. In the hallway or the cellar <laughs> yep. and so we were divided and who yep. you know right. gee cooperative game let's divide the let's divide the group okay i'll <laughs> yeah. just go run up to the attic so that was right. not a smart play on right. my part that we do it every dnd &D party right split up the party to, <laughs> well, to go cover as much ground as possible right yeah well in this game there's i'm sure plenty of scenarios where you have to split up because time is not on well, your side mm -hmm. that, yeah. that's the incentive because you stick together mm -hmm. it's safer yeah but it takes longer to do things. Mm. Hey, if you split up mm. the party, you cover more ground, do more nope. stuff. But now mm. everybody by themselves. Yep. So basically, damned if you do happen. and burned if you don't, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't feel as bad now. Yeah, no, it was a good. It's, <laughs> the problem was we needed clues, and you get those from different areas, and we right. gathered enough to solve like the little problems that flip it up every turn like you're blocked in you can't get to the next hallway so we needed four clues collectively to get through there and somebody had two and a couple of us had one but yeah. we just didn't end up in the right spot together to to combine those clues in the right location so yeah slowed us that's down for sure every time like my my character was all about fighting <laughs> and um i just didn't seem to have that many opportunities to fight mm -hmm. um so, you know, granted, we played an early scenario, so mm -hmm. it might get better. But I just think it's really hard in every way to make everything work the right way. Got to, Unfortunately, you have to become mm -hmm. a victim of Cthulhu many times before you're going to win this one, I think. Mm -hmm. well, I Evan, think is that the character behind you that you played? No, Evan? yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How did you like the role playing opportunities? I know you're always looking for them of uh, the board game. Yeah, and that is the nice thing. And and it's true of any sort of Cthulhu uh 
themed games that I've played over the years, dating back decades now, is that uh, it invites a certain level of role playing in which, you know, you're still limited by the structure of what the rules are, but you can bring as much flair and charisma as you want to your into your character. I played it in an Irish ex-con, so I had it brought on me stage Irish, and it was talking like this for most of the game, you see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it was, that was, I think the theme was great. The setting mm -hmm. really, I felt it everywhere. I felt it in every card, every part of the game really drew me in with its look and even the language that was being used on the cards, I thought was the color text was all elegantly done to represent the era mm -hmm. and feel really um, not just spooky, but also 1920s. Yeah. So I like that a lot. And as um, far as the play is concerned for me, I felt it put enough pressure on us to keep us feeling like we were on the edge of losing the entire time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We were they one bad calculation away from oh, yeah. falling. I mean, one of the steps is literally taking doom counters. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and being organized. I mean, we missed one handing off one clue to the right person. We had enough clues, but mm -hmm. we missed handing it off and completely blew any chance we had of winning. Just we won. by that. We did win. We well, did win. without <laughs> losing we, 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 without, uh, yeah, party yeah. along the way, probably because no. we lost that turn. Because it was like, I thought you had both clues. No, I had one clue. I thought you were coming <laughs> with the other clue. Right. Yeah. 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 So, right, right. You want to explain yeah. that what that means, like clue, having the clues and what the what the what we needed to do and the how it unfolded. Ed. Yeah, with the, the East Act has well a clock because that's what the bad guy's agenda is, and then. The objective for us is to go find clues, and if we get the right number of clues and bring them into the right place, then we can unlock the next step. And mm -hmm. so the object of the game is to successfully complete all of the player objectives uh, mm -hmm. cooperatively before the bad guys complete their evil agenda. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, what... What did you think of the how long it took to play this game? Is it the right amount of time? I the think scenarios? the speed goes up with you no, know, like most games. As you play it, you'll know the rules. So you won't be like, "Oh, what can I do? Oh, what right. rule does map mean?" It's like, right. oh, mm -hmm. looking at the cards and knowing how did that work with what I have in my deck. Mm -hmm. you no, know, it's it's a deck building game. So this is a collectible, you know, collectible or living card game from a Fantasy Flight. So. The, the deck keep involved. You get more options so you can fine tune your deck. Mm -hmm. Your investigator right. mm -hmm. can like do a little deck building. And once you play a while, you can say, oh, I know what card that I want to have in my deck that match my play style. And yeah. then you'll, you'll be able to have an engine going quickly. You'll know what you're doing. You know, yeah. uh, yeah. it's like one, two, okay, I'm done. Right, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> it's you're neat. This thing because I did this other thing. Yeah. It's kind of cool that they combine two decks to make your deck. You know what I mean? There's like uh, different portions of the deck that you combine to make the ca different characters. Yeah, they're right. like attributes or skill areas. Mm -hmm. Like somebody might be a good detective or other guys are good researchers. And you know. yep. I really like the arrangement of where you place the cards on the table too. I mean, you put the rooms in the center because it, the whole game is just cards. Mm -hmm. So you put the rooms in the center and those are the room cards. You have your little space over here for your stuff your skills your allies and things like that um and then you move into the locations and the monsters show up in the rooms and you put the cards next to them i think it's a great little uh, play area that it makes yeah. and a big part of the game is the story that's being told because all the cards you mentioned there's a, a nice paragraph or two that's getting unveiled and there's choices depending on whether you, you take door number one or door number <laughs> two the adventure goes on a different way. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And what's yep. neat, this may, the game is meant to be played as a campaign. So the choices you made, you know, two scenarios ago could be impacting you later. It's like, wow, I made this decision two scenarios ago, and now this happened because of it. And yep. I think mm -hmm. that's a cool story building. building I mean, that's, that's fantasy yeah. flight, you know, making, they call it a living card game for a reason, you know, they make it mm -hmm. feel like you're living in it, like it's an, a, a real living story. So 
Yep. Be... Choose your own adventure in a way. I yeah. love yeah. choose your own adventure. Choose your own adventure. <laughs> choose your own adventure. <laughs> Except for this time, sometimes the adventure chooses you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I did feel that in this particular game, because I, again, I played other Cthulhu themed games. This one felt a little bit more forced, a little more narrow to me than some of the other ones that I've played. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, if we didn't hit the exact right formula of events and, and, and actions, there was no way one of all four of us were going to make it alive mm -hmm. out of there. And we and, didn't. And we didn't. <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> explorers, it's time to dig up or bury Arkham Horror, the card game. Ed? This cooperative LCG offers fun puzzles and mystery to explore in the Arkham setting. I'll dig this up to risk getting lost in time and space one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Evan? True to the theme, Arkham Horror the Card Game delivers on the Cthulhu feel and environment. I found the game to be a little restrictive, coupled with a potentially devastating amount of randomness. That's that thick bag. <laughs> that bag of is truly a bag of horrors. Yeah, yes, it, it had some tight restraints. I think that the game's designed to sort of force you into a certain amount of actions. For that reason, and that's only my opinion, I'm going to bury the game. It just felt a little too forced for me. Right. Mike? I really, when I play this game, it feels more like a puzzle than a heart pounding adventure into the heart of darkness. <laughs> um, but I love a good puzzle and this was challenging. So I'll say, dig it up. It is not the creepiest um, Cthulhu type game I've ever played. That's for sure. The role playing game, you know, leaves this in the dusk for spooky creepiness. But as a board game and a card game, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Theme heavily informed play. I'm digging it up. Nice. Now, let's talk about Brass Birmingham. Mm. I'm glad I don't have to lift the box for this one because it's huge. <laughs> it's made of brass. <laughs> <laughs> it is designed by Gavin Brown, Matt Tolman, and Martin Wallace. Yeah, oh. baby boy. <laughs> hey, we'll get Published to that. Published by Roxley in 2018. Number of players, two to four, ages 14 and up. Playtime, 60 to 120 minutes. Uh, okay, Mikey, tell us what's in the box. Well, let's start with the cover, which shows a slick cover. cobblestone street with a rogue wagon wheel laying on its <laughs> side. The trademark Roxley steam chicken really stands out on the stark <laughs> background. <laughs> There's a lot going on inside here, guys, so I'm going to try to go through it fast. Inside, you're going to see a double-sided game board with a light and dark side, four double-sided player mats, four character tiles, each with a male and female side, which is kind of cool, 56 link tiles, which link your trains, 76 cards for the different industries and locations, four player aids, eight markers to track the victory and income, 48 cubes for coal and iron, 15 beer barrels, 67 money tokens, although if you're a cool kid like Ed, you're going to have the awesome uh, the poker chips instead for the deluxe edition. <laughs> yeah. of course. And 180 industry tiles, including manufacturers, cotton mills, breweries, potteries, ironworks, coal mines, and merchants. <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> yeah, let's face it. It is what's in Ed's box. Because yeah. Ed loves game. those boxes. I do. I mean, give well, me stuff. I love to play with stuff. <laughs> before we get this review chugging, Evan, tell us how it's played. Brass Birmingham is an economic strategy game. Players assume the role of competing historic entrepreneurs in Birmingham, England during the Industrial Revolution. The board has towns and cities and they're connected by a series of canals and or railways. Entrepreneurs will develop, build and establish industries of their choosing. They will also build their transportation networks, very important, in an effort to make the most of a particular town's market demands. Each round players will make two actions per turn. There are six possible actions to take. Number one, build an industry. Number two, expand your network. Number three, develop new technology. Number four, sell your goods. Number five, take a loan. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> Number six, the new scout action. That's a new action for Brass Birmingham specifically. The game is played over two halves. The Canal Era, they're the years 1770 to 1830, and the Rail Era, that's the years 1830 to 1870. Mm -hmm. To win the game, score the most victory points. All right, let's start shoveling the coal into our engines and get this review of Brass Birmingham <laughs> in the locomotion. Yeah, four feet ahead, baby. 
Yeah. All right. To pile on the metaphors, let's address the <laughs> elephant in the room and talk about the fact that this is a Martin Wallace game. What yeah. does that exactly mean for people who are not familiar with a Martin Wallace game? Is it fair to let Mikey describe it or is he too biased? I'm, uh, both. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Go ahead. Well, well, first, first, before I do that, I want to make a direct appeal to Martin Wallace, who I know is ab obviously watching this yeah. show right now. I'll give now. you a Martin yeah. gift. How's okay. that? Uh, oh, yes. Martin, <laughs> please. I pay so many taxes in real life. I never have enough money. And then I go to play your lovely and amazingly well-balanced game and all the feelings that I feel <laughs> in real life are translating to me in the game. Your games are great. I love you, man. But please just give me a game where I can earn more than one dollar by round three. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> one dollar. What money, Mikey? Just take a loan. He uh, offers plenty of those. He loves <laughs> loans at horrifying rates. <laughs> you don't just lose the money from the loan and a slight bit of interest. In this game, you're actually losing income levels <laughs> well it's authenticity mike i mean that's the way interest and income money to make money. <laughs> i know very well how that works and that's why i want to play a no. game and escape all of yeah. that <laughs> in the 1800s you could expect 18 percent interest that was a bargain <laughs> yay <laughs> Martin, you're a man out of time uh, uh, okay. i love you man you're killing me <laughs> as far as Martin Wallace games go, I did uh, I did find this one more tolerable than the others um, that I played. Um, more forgiving in some ways. He didn't feel so behind, I guess. We'll start with the look, though. It was gorgeous. Oh, a yeah. beautiful oh, yeah. game. The pieces felt so heavy in your hand. And, Ed, you had the deluxe edition, which included... Uh, Apple poker chips and oh, uh, the, fancy. It, all the the bling on it was really improved. They got the new poker chips, a new component, the box. It the 2018 edition of these games, well produced. Mm. And Super. Ed, why would you want poker chips for a train and goods transporting game? Why? Uh, it's that's the best way to handle money, duh. Right. <laughs> pay for money. So a lot of a lot of the eighteen XX players, and it, what's an eighteen XX game? This is not one, but tell them what an eighteen XX game is. Well, the heavy game, eighteen XX game. Anytime you're dealing with money or uh, exchanging money, often poker chip is just a little faster to deal with, especially compared to paper money. Mm. So right. when you have a cardboard money, a little little coin money, it's not so bad. No, right. it's, uh, it's a little easier to exchange stuff, but. When you have poker chips, it feels meaty. You can able, you can readily see how much that is. Yeah. Right. I've like, seen you. I like to feel the weight of that money. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like I don't want to give it up. It's so heavy. <laughs> but in 18xx games, there's those train games where you're exchanging money all the time. And I've watched you guys sometimes play them and count these little tiny pieces of paper mm. money. And it <sighs> is worst. super that frustrating. Means we're playing it wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, get your own poker chips. That's the only right. way to go. It can really slow you down, though. It, it really can. It's no, surprising absolutely. how much that paper money can slow you down. So the poker chips are gorgeous, better than my poker chips for poker. Uh, everything about we'll it. play poker chips. They were great. Yeah. Yep. So this has more. It's not just Brass Birmingham in this collection, right? Well, there's the original game, which is, used to be just called Brass. Now it's Lancashire. Oh. Like sure, yeah. yeah, a little confusing, but <laughs> but as Ed was explained to me offline, the reason they renamed it is because they wanted it to have all the same qualities, looks, and feel of the new Brass Birmingham game that came out. So that's right. why. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, what did you think of the play of this game? Did you enjoy transporting well, I, your goods? I mean, I have a particular <laughs> point I want to make on that is that mm -hmm. you're you're putting up uh, industries sometimes that connect you to resources like barrels of beer or coal, and well, you're putting iron. those resources. What's that? Well, iron. Oh, iron. Yes, and iron too. But like you put them on the board and other people can snatch up your resources that are on the board. Like, yes, it gives you some benefit, but if you're trying to work towards something like building a new uh, coal mine or something, you need to have certain resources on the board to do that. And once your turn's over, people can buy those things out from underneath you, and that hurt. That hurt. It, it hurts, but what it also <laughs> does... I, I felt the other way about it. To me, uh -huh. yeah, me uh, too. you can certainly build and put your mm -hmm. stuff in a corner and isolate yourself and have your own like little private economy, mm -hmm. but the advantage of being connected to the other players is, sure, I built that coal mine, and I, mean, I have 
no usage for that call. But if somebody else uses their action to use up my call and give me victory points, mm-hmm. hey, that's mm-hmm. an action I didn't have to take in order to get victory points. You're using yeah. your action to give me victory points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly but right. You plan in your turn out, though. You're like, I want to have this will be my little engine that I'm building. Mm-hmm. And there's no barrel. You have to right. change your whole turn. You know, that yeah. to me, I don't like that. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, that's a community aspect of this game is that goods you produce, everyone else can and is must use mm-hmm. in order for them to go ahead and make their things. But you're not uh, taking the short end of the stick. You also get advancements as other people use up your resources. Right. I, I found it. I found it really nice, actually. Most of the mm-hmm. most of the time, I was not frustrated by people grabbing up goods that I had produced or that were sitting on the board. I don't know that I produced that much, but I know that I really enjoyed taking other people's stuff off the board. It was <laughs> I sure did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the problems too for me is that I like to plan for the long term, and we only played like the short version of the game, which is the canal version. Um, you uh, mean the perfect length game? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you mean? For, because oh, that's for, what it was. Well, you like to Kool Aid man kick the door down and get and <laughs> snatch up everything you can early in the game. So yeah. that was the perfect. Oh, Kool Aid yeah. man was grabbing yeah. those barrels all over the place. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like Kool Aid man had a barrel under each arm. <laughs> that's right. Down cool. the road. <laughs> that was Celeste Kool Aid man, and I, yep. I couldn't keep up with that for the short nope. game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you would have liked it feel... a little bit longer. Oh, sorry, Ed. You would have liked it a little longer, Mike? Yes, I wanted to play the full version of it. It would have worked out much better for my planning mm. st- style. Mm. But, yeah. uh, no. but yeah. playing the, the first canal phase is great for your very first game. Because mm. while the mechanics are actually relatively simple, there's so many choices. You can feel overwhelmed. Mm. Yeah. Because like, well, I can, you know, the action to just build or put a network here or sell. Wow. Yeah. And with those three actions, like, uh, yeah. that, that hard? Well, which industry? There's 20 spaces I could build. Which one do I want to build on? Mm-hmm. So it takes a little, you know, play in order to, you know, take these very simple ideas of building and then selling uh, and see how they interact with each other. So this way, the next time you play, it's like, ah, I got a plan like Mikey does. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do this, this, and the other thing. And I, I already got four turns ahead, and then Celeste comes along, <laughs> and uh, Kool-Aid, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm ready for your Kool-Aid action this time. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely play different next time around. It, it would be a very, though seriously, it would be a very different game, Mike, if we mm-hmm. played um, with a longer game. Because my, I don't think my strategy would have held that long like i was a smash and grab player yeah you would have ran out of steam yeah i think i would (laughs) have yeah right right right. (laughs) but it wasn't me that won despite how well i did by (laughs) one victory point thank you martin wallace by one victory point evan was the victor yeah. Silent but deadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did it by expanding my network, basically laying as much rail as I kind of could at the end of the game and connecting up certain towns and cities. And the more links you can make, those are worth victory points. Those links are very points. important. Mm-hmm. And back to kind of what Ed was saying about choosing your strategy going forward and the number of choices you have. I don't I had I found myself very frustrated to a, to an extent. I don't usually get frustrated by games like this, but though with that level of choice and that number and trying to game it out in my head as to which would be my best path to victory, I wound up a going more random than <laughs> ultimately coming up with it with a uh, with a clear path that I was trying to follow. And B, it took away my interaction with the other players in the game because I was mm-hmm. concentrating so much of my brain power on trying to do the calculations as to which path forward was good for me. I kind of lost track on what everyone else was doing and that probably is not mm-hmm. a good thing in this game. No. Yeah, you need no. to watch the whole board. And Martin Wallace has this way of presenting you with a hundred possible potential options, but only allowing you to have maybe one or two of them. <laughs> So there's all these teases all over the <laughs> Limitations. Yeah. There, there are a lot of good things. He doesn't hold your hand. You, uh, He does allow you to make 
bad choices. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. The whole my first, go ahead, dude. The I wanted hole. my okay. first move back <laughs> in the worst way. So, yeah, you could dig and yourself I, a hole and you go, wow, this hole goes deep. He's not telling me to stop there. Oh, yeah. gosh. Oh. I made yeah. an epically bad mistake uh, for a Martin Wallace game, and that is to, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I just wasn't paying attention. Mm -hmm. I passed an action. <laughs> you can't afford to pass one. <laughs> half no. one oh, wait, take a loan or time. something you yeah. know I do anything, anything. literally anything, anything. <laughs> i would yeah. have won if i had done anything Don't oh yeah that one nothing. point was missed by you not laying one train car down Any so that would have been it <laughs> pick up a good anything <laughs> Yeah, never skip yeah. an action when presented with the possibility to take one, and except in very rare cases, but especially not in a Martin Wallace game. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why I thought this game has a lot of interaction with the players, because what people are doing, like with Celeste taking the goods and then Evan building last at network, that actually, by building all those links, sure, he's given himself victory points. But now I reached somewhere where I didn't reach before because of that. Mm -hmm. And he, no, he gets a lot of benefit from it, but I can capitalize it on too. So now is it, that message, well, is, am I benefiting from it more or is he benefiting from it more? And I yeah. don't know. And that, yeah. that, There's a lot of calculations. You don't really Just know right? no, yeah. who's really on top until you, you did the final counting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm confused just listening to you, Ed. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that's how confusing it can be in these the games. Victory points it's coming in at all minutes. angles, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, explorers, it's time to dig up or bury Brass Birmingham. Let's start with Evan. All right, Brass <laughs> Birmingham, it's not for the light gamer. And perhaps that's the understatement of the day. <laughs> the components are super high quality. Look, it feels and informs play. And once the aim gets going, the actual turns do start rolling. It's a brain burner, so get ready for that. Um, hardcore board gamers are going to absolutely love Brass Birmingham, and I'm going to give it another try. Dig it up. Ed? Yes. Birmingham provides a lot of strategic options to explore and opportunity to outmaneuver your competitors with well-timed tactics <laughs> i enjoy wallace game <laughs> and i'll dig this one up as one of the best of the brass games wow uh -huh. nice mike okay so i know i sound like i hate <laughs> martin wallace and his games no. No. but the truth is they're always well designed well balanced frustrating but i think in a really good way so i definitely would play this again and i have to say dig it up <sighs> I am, get ready, hold on to your chairs, your hats, whatever it is. Uh -oh. I'm digging this game up. Yes. Now, granted, I only played the short version and maybe that's why, maybe I'll only enjoy the short version. <laughs> if you're not a heavy gamer, I suggest playing the short scenario, um, but I really enjoyed it. You see this picture behind me? This is one of the cards from the game. It's so pretty to look at and so engaging in every aspect, even the mechanics. Dig it up. All right. <laughs> All right. Start. All right. Our last game this week is Port Royale. With the new backdrop. Yarr. Hey, look Yarr. at that. Yarr. Yeah, I'm looking for, <laughs> looking for a cool pirate backdrop here. I'll be right Designed there. by Alexander Pfister, published by Pegasus Spiel in 2014 and Steve Jackson Games 2017. Number of players, two to five, ages eight and up. Playtime, 20 to 50 minutes. Okay, Mikey, tell us what's in the box. <laughs> All right. On the cover, we see an experienced and somewhat grizzled gray-bearded pirate smoking a pipe and doing his best Jack Daniels impression. <laughs> uh, next to him stands a seagull who looks like he's tried to warn his friend of impending danger hundreds of times in the past, but has now given up and resigned himself to his fate. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you ready for this, guys? Inside yeah. the box, there are yes. 120 cards representing ships, people, and missions. And that's what's in the box. <laughs> are you sure you took everything out of the box? That's all of Did it. I shook the box hard. Did, Did you, you turn it upside down and tap it? Coins uh, yeah. coins didn't fall out. I was waiting for doubloons. No, nope, that's it. Okay. All of it. Cards. Actually, all three of these games, you can see us doing a hyper unboxing of on our Instagram. Mm -hmm. So check it out there. 
just Any so you time. know what a hyper unboxing is. <laughs> we <laughs> pop the box open, lift up the cover, go through all the components really fast in front of the screen. Um, of course, it, because we're on caffeine, we can do it super fast for you and they get to see everything that's in there and then we close the box back up, boom. Yep. Yeah, either that or using technology. But. Yeah, well, whatever, Ed. I think it's I'm... both, actually. It is caffeine and technology. Caffeine and tech. Caffeine is tech. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's uh, Port Royal tech, actually. Oh, yeah. Royal. Um, All right. But, uh, yes, you can see those on Instagram, and there's a oh, click. Tap the thing. Tap the actual picture, because I do hmm. a lot of extra effort to put the cool music in, and I know that's not a thing for Instagram, but I... I know you'll be rewarded. Do it. Yeah. Trust me. Nah, the music's are great. Music. It's the old spice thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before, <laughs> before we had the wind at our backs on this review, Evan, tell us how it's played. Port Royal is a press your luck style card game. It's set in the Caribbean. Port Royal is the main port for all trade, commerce, and action in the area. <laughs> the players will draw from a deck of cards. On a turn, a player can draw as many cards as they like, one at a time, placing each card into the harbor. Each card shows one of the following. There's four different types. A person, a ship, an expedition, or a tax increase. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when a player draws a card and reveals a person or a ship, they place that card in the harbor. The more cards there are in the harbor, the more ships and people you can choose from. But beware. Drawing another ship, a second ship, with the same color flag on it in that harbor and your turn may come to a very sudden yeah. end. And then no char no cards can be chosen. You're done. Mm -hmm. No one can move, move out. Next player. A player Everyone's can a loser. <laughs> <laughs> a player can stop drawing cards whenever they like. When done, each other player has the option of playing of, of paying the active player a coin, a tribute, basic, basically, and then being able to pull one of those cards from the harbor if they want. Mm -hmm. People that you collect represent influence, also those expedition cards as well. And 12 influence points total is the goal. The pirate with the most influence points is deemed the winner and is crowned the most feared and glorified pirate in that Yarr. glorious seafaring capital <laughs> named Port Royal of Est. You knew you knew the Args were coming. I, I mean, mean, when you yeah. saw the yeah, you, you just, you we'd know, apologize, but you you know you knew. Yeah, yeah. If you're a regular <laughs> listener to the show, you've heard your share of Args and Yargs and Avasts, but we're gonna keep going. I'm sorry. And if you watched our live play of this on our Twitch channel, we go into pirate trivia and a whole bunch of other things, which yeah. you can uh, <laughs> take a look at there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we played this game on yours truly's favorite interface for online board game play, and that is yukata.de. Yeah. Shout That's out what you to gotta, you gotta play on yukata. And if you, you look at my background, there's this quick shot of what it looks like, basically. That's, the, that's how it looks That like is out. the OG board game interface right there for <laughs> online gameplay. It is so old school. It is no frills, no ads, no nothing but the game, and sometimes not quite the game <laughs> <laughs> and you got to click finish your move no matter what oh my no god what our, our time on our games played doubles because we forget to click that button so yeah. often so often we're all like whose turn is it what's going on who's turn yeah. is it? but it's it's a fabulous interface it's a great mm. place to try this particular game out which played beautifully there we played it on twitch so it's on our twitch channel probably and if you miss it there mm -hmm. you can catch it on our youtube channel mm -hmm. right it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun and be prepared for the yars. Yeah, that's where all the yars are. <laughs> the yars. <laughs> that's so. where the yars be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, and here, of course. A few here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we may have had fun. Don't know if that's a spoiler compared <laughs> based on what we've said so far. But what did you guys think of how it played on Yukata? Uh, I, mean, I think it played pretty well because uh, I particularly like seeing that the the card information there you can hover and get the tool tip and say oh that's what that card does mm -hmm. yes it's really can, great yeah we the symbols played... are a little tricky without that so. it has an iconography so it's like once yes. you know the iconography you know what it does just by looking at it but for your first time playing and online it's nice to be able to hover over it and go ah that's what it does right so you didn't don't have to consult a reference card and look for it you just mm -hmm. mouse over mm -hmm. it that was nice. And as you can see here, these are examples of three of the cards in the game. Oh, yeah. 
and yep. um, person ship and a expedition is the right, right. hand yep. card. That's the right. ex wait. I'm going to point. There it is. There's and, the expedition card. <laughs> And this is the Pegasus Spiel version, which is the cover Ed has there. There's also a Steve Jackson version, which is the same, except the ship flags are actual country countries. Countries, France, yeah. Britain, as opposed to just the color green or the color red or blue. Right, 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 right. So there were those tax cards. What we're doing in this game is trying to press our luck to get as many cards out as we can and get as much loot for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. that can go wrong. Yeah. So before we get to taxes, let's talk about how that can go wrong and how painful <laughs> that can be. Well, you should talk about how painful it can be, Celeste. It, it caused you more pain than anybody else, I think. <laughs> I have never had such bad luck in a press your luck game in my life. And you are all about press your luck games. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh. But, but Mikey left me in the dust. I mean, he pressed <laughs> his luck 10 times more than I did. Well, and he, and he usually bucked it. Yeah, I busted often, but my non-busts were very epic. So right. here's here's a strategy that I kind of employed for that. There's a card that you can get. It's the one on Celeste's uh, right-hand side, I believe. And yep, and that's the... Um, this guy. Yep, that guy. See the swords there? So when you're flipping those ships, if you get two ships of the same color, um, you your turn is over. But the ships have a little number at the bottom. And if you can match that number of swords to the ship's number of swords, you can get rid of that ship so it doesn't sink you. Yeah. So sure. if you get enough sailor guys, you can defend yourself against the press your luck problems. Right. <laughs> it makes it easier to press your luck. Like if, if a ship comes around that you don't want, you can just, well, I'm going to get rid of that ship. Yep. And since I love to press my luck so hard, that was my main man. I was looking for those every time they popped up in the harbor. You see, but yeah. what you have to remember is that not only are you going to be able to choose your card, but other players are going to choose cards from that harbor too. So you reveal the more cards you reveal, the better chance you give your other players of also getting some nice cards to choose from. True, but yeah. Uh, they got to give go. you a little compensation for taking a card on your turn. A tribute. That's like, yeah, that's how I'm making my Yarr. money. I'm going to make people pay me for taking cards. I, yeah. guess the, yeah. I guess the theme <laughs> idea there is that you're the pirate that's in the harbor shaking everybody down that week. <laughs> I guess. Maybe. It's what, like you're just patrolling the docks looking for <laughs> down money. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what it's supposed to mean. But yeah. No. I guess you got the harbor master tied yeah. up in the shed. There's yeah, a... but be because I busted all the time, that was my bread and butter. That was like, tough. I had no other money except what other people were paying me <laughs> in shakedown money in between turns. Like, <laughs> well, I there's another. Imp ship. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was tough for you. I mean, I, the, another really important aspect and the real reason to press your luck is that if you get multiple different colored flag ships up on your board during your turn, you can get more cards so if right. i if i drew five different color ships and didn't bust i can take three cards that turn oh yeah that's such that's a huge advantage it's hard huge. to get five different colors out yep. very hard colors in the deck that yeah. basically mean you got to get through one of each color and nothing else without right. busting yeah. very yep. challenging but that's the real temptation for yeah. pressing your luck though. sure is oh i could just go and eh, what are the odds <laughs> i'm gonna get another green if i just get one more red i'll get to get a second mm -hmm. card <laughs> so <laughs> tempting um oh, the loot. and those ships coming up is how you make your money they mm -hmm. have like you know between one and four i think coins on them mm -hmm. and when you take the ship as a prize that's how you get the money to buy your money. other stuff later on right but don't get too much money or, you'll have <laughs> or to if you taxes. do buy people because <laughs> when the tax card comes out guess what like me when you have too much money <laughs> the tax man comes along oh and they're gonna just take most of your money from mm -hmm. you half of it in fact yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I now it's that not most. always the guy with the most money though sometimes no that's right it depends I, on the type of tax card i love how be. random the taxes are i mean it really <laughs> does feel imperialist in that way <laughs> it's like the king is just gonna tax whatever he damn well pleases this month yeah, that's, that's it true. <laughs> you know oh uh what's good i say what's going on down at port royal this week <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of coffee, and let's tax that. <laughs> uh oh, clock's so ticking just, on us, guys. And it's yeah, we got we got to wrap this up within a I few know, minutes. Wait a minute, I I've know. got to complain about the taxes. You're have yeah, to that's right. Uh, that's right. We want. <laughs> Don't worry, Celeste. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, it's time to dig up or bury Port Royal. Let's start with Mike. All right. It's fairly easy to teach and gives a great opportunity for epic press your luck turns, which is one of my favorite things. So I say dig this bad boy up. 
Evan. I love Press Your Luck game. Port Royal delivers. The rules are easy to follow. Gameplay is fast. Everything about it, I felt, was interesting. It's light on theme, but it otherwise hits all the right buttons. Dig it up. <laughs> Ed? <laughs> Sometimes you are looking for the light Push Your Luck game with a fun theme to play without burning too many brain cells. I'll dig this up for those times. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to say one thing, and if you want to know what it means, you'll have to go watch the uh, us do the playthrough on our YouTube channel. Sparhawk! <laughs> and dig it up. Come on. Yeah, come Push on. your luck, whether I lost or won. <laughs> dig it up. All right. And that brings us to the end of our Dragon Con video show. Thank Ooh. you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. This was great. We really, really loved it. And if you'd like more perks and content from our show, just go to our website, click on Become a Supporter today, and you will get exclusive episodes of... Bonus Boys! Of a bonus. <laughs> and just like, click a review of us, give us a heart, give us a shout out, mention us down at the local dog grooming store, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> it helps us grow. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks again, guys. Bye, See everybody. You in the podcatcher feed. Yes. yes. See you live next year. Happy yeah. gaming. Christian, hopefully. Bye. Yeah. I guess. <laughs>